is the time of the next speaker, which is Tommaso Ronconi from CIS in Trieste, Italy. Uh, he will present a novel Python tool for modeling galaxies set is, um, constraining dust roll with Alma. Thank you. Thank you to the organizers and uh, thanks, uh, Elisabetta, for the introduction. Uh, yeah, today I will uh, talk about uh, this new library we are developing, uh, which is implemented in Python and whose purpose is to model uh, um, spectral energy distributions from galaxies. The project uh, is still uh, in the final stages of development, but uh, it's mature enough to start uh, testing it uh, against uh, some test bench applications. And in particular today, I will uh, show you quantitatively how uh, including uh, ALMA bands in the photometric analysis of galaxies is uh, increasing the constraining power on uh, the dust parameters. So, First, let me face the elephant in the room. So answer the question, why should we need a, a new SED fitting library? Uh, let's say that the two key points driving our uh, development were uh, to assess uh, performance and to include uh, new models uh, into uh, the library. Uh, concerning the former, we achieve uh, a high computational performance uh, exploiting uh, both the uh, compiled language uh, uh, C++ and the Python, Python user friendliness by implementing the library with uh, an hybrid uh, scheme. And uh, in its first release, the library will include an MCMC framework uh, that uh, allows to obtain uh, fully converged uh, uh, likelihoods in the matter of um, tens of minutes, let's say. Uh, concerning the modeling, so the latter point, uh, we have implemented uh, analytically solved uh, evolutions for the main components uh, building up a galaxy. Uh, namely the gas content, the stellar content, the dust content, following the revolution both in mass and in metallicity. Uh, another point is our uh, model for the dust. We implement the two components dust model, which provides a realistic modeling uh, of the interplay between absorption and emission uh, from dust. Uh, so let me show you this uh, simplistic infographic. Uh, which uh, summarizes the workflow uh, of our library. It takes as an input uh, the simple stellar population libraries that, of course, we do not compute uh, uh, on the fly, and some uh, parameters uh, uh, defining the models that um, are uh, implemented within uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the tool. These components are processed through our star formation history module that produces these uh, um, uh, simplified uh, galactic objects in which we have different stellar populations of different ages that might or might not be still within their uh, molecular birth cloud and are embedded within a more diffuse dust medium. Mm, we also include the, pos the possibility of um, uh, adding up uh, the emission from an active galactic nucleus. Uh, I can show you some examples of um, SEDs produced with our library for uh, different characteristic um, galaxy population. We have uh, the emission from uh, early type galaxies, uh, the emission for an example uh, uh, late type galaxy, and in the solid line, the emission of uh, a dusty star forming galaxy. I would like you to notice that the uh, wavelength range that we can cover uh, spans from 1 to 10 to the 10 angstrom. And on the right plot, I'm decomposing uh, the spectral energy distribution into the several components that builds it up. Uh, 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 and I'm focusing in particular on uh, dusty star forming galaxies because uh, on the first place, uh, these are, uh, um, these are uh, laboratories to test uh, all the effect of most of the components uh, our library can model. And furthermore, uh, because uh, we have access to data 
produced in works from Pantoni and collaborators in the last two years. But first of all, let me tell you a couple of things about dusty star forming galaxies and why they are interesting. These are massive objects with stellar masses above 10 to the 10 to 10 to the 11 solar masses. They are very luminous in the infrared with luminosities above 10 to the 11, 10 to the 12 solar luminosity, loss, solar luminosities. And uh, they, their um, number density distribution with redshift peaks at around redshift 2.5. So uh, at the peak of uh, cosmic star formation history, uh, these kind of objects are in fact thought to play a very important uh, role on the formation of uh, local early type galaxies. The uh, sample from uh, LARA has been selected in redshift to reside in the redshift range between 1.5 and 3 uh, and provides a panchromatic um, uh, fluxes spanning from the X-ray band to the radio. Uh, if you want more information about uh, this sample of galaxies, uh, you can follow Lara's talk tomorrow. Uh, just uh, to show you, uh, these, uh, this is the evolution of a typical dusty star forming galaxy spectrum uh, with just redshift. Uh, and you can already see that uh, the ALMA bands, these are ALMA band 7, 6, and 3, if I'm not wrong, uh, reside in the part of the spectrum that is mostly affected by the K correction. So we have uh, almost constant fluxes uh, for a, a huge range of uh, uh, redshifts. Uh, okay, so uh, the question we want to answer is, what is the um, actual constraining power given just by the ALMA bands? To do so, uh, I generated uh, a mock data set uh, extracted from uh, the SED produced uh, with uh, Galapai. Uh, uh, and the sample I generated are uh, without the contribution from ALMA bands and including uh, this contribution. As you can already see uh, from this uh, spectrum, which has been decomposed into the several contributes, the uh, ALMA bands are uh, testing the descending part of the emission from dust. And in particular, this region in which our two component dust model has uh, uh, overlapping between the two decreasing spectra. Uh, the way we want uh, to have a quantitative measurement of uh, this uh, impact on our capability of estimating uh, the model parameters is by exploiting the uh, Fisher formalism. I guess uh, some of you might not be very familiar with what the Fisher information matrix is, so I will try to give you a grasp of uh, what's behind uh, this formalism. So as, uh, assuming that you have uh, an observable random variable and the parametric model of this observable, in, if it is possible to define a probability uh, that assesses the um, goodness of your fit, then the Fisher information matrix is defined as the um, opposite of the second order derivative of the logarithm of this probability. Uh, the math can show that uh, this quantity is the opposite of the Hessian matrix, and therefore it is uh, a local measure of uh, curvature of a function of many variables. Now, there is a, the a mathematical theorem, a statistical theorem actually, that, uh, the, uh, that is dubbed the kramer rau bound, telling you that the inverse of uh, this Fisher information matrix gives you a lower bound on uh, the covariance matrix of your parameters, provided that you have an unbiased estimator of these parameters. In general, as unbiased estimator of the parameters, we can assume uh, the log likelihood defined as the chi-square uh, between our observable and the parametric model. So uh, just going uh, to uh, the result of this analysis, uh, 
here on the left side plot, you can see uh, the um, uh, covariance matrix defined as the inference of the Fisher matrix. And therefore, this is your lower bound. So the best possible error you can get on the estimate of your parameters. In yellow, I'm showing the confidence uh, levels for one and two sigma uh, in the sample, not considering alma bands. And uh, in um, uh, blue, uh, we have the confidence levels uh, for uh, the sample, considering the alma parameters, uh, the alma bands measurements. As you can see from uh, these plots, the two sigma contour of the sample with the ALMA bands uh, is uh, almost uh, for all the parameters of the model uh, residing within the one sigma uh, contour of the measurement without the ALMA um, uh, data. On the uh, diagonal, you can see what is the variation of the standard deviation associated to these uh, single parameters marginalized over all the other parameters. Uh, and from this matrix, you can also see uh, some important covariance, covariances between the model parameters. Uh, to have a quantitative uh, estimate of the improvement uh, uh, that you can get uh, by the inclusion of uh, the ALMA photometry, uh, you can just focus to the uh, last column of this table that is listing the difference in the um, relative error uh, measured uh, without and with ALMA. As you can see, for some of these parameters, these um, uh, this difference is up to 30% for uh, concerning the age of uh, the galaxy. Uh, some of the structural um, parameters defining dust, uh, which are the um, uh, attenuation curve spectral index for uh, the two different uh, components of dust have uh, improvements uh, uh, the above 10%, uh, around 10%. And finally, I would like you to focus on these last two quantities, which are not free parameters of our model, but are derived quantities, uh, uh, in particular uh, stellar mass and dust mass. For these two quantities, which are derived directly from uh, the photometry, we have an improvement uh, in the estimate of the, of the parameters of around 17%. So, uh, I think at the end I've been uh, quite quick. I'm already at the summary. Uh, I have just shown uh, uh, you this uh, new library we are implementing. Uh, these are uh, the key points uh, of the library itself. And uh, I've shown a test bench application uh, demonstrating that uh, just the inclusion of those uh, three alma bands uh, on the descending part of the emission from dust uh, provide a 20 to 30 percent improvement on uh, uh, up to 20 to 30 percent improvement, of course, being honest uh, on some of the dust defining quantities. We are going to publish uh, the library in the next few months after uh, some of the last components uh, are there. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Tommaso. Very interesting, very nice talk. I appreciate also the math. <laughs> also appreciate the fact that you are building a um, method we aim to be also more user friendly. No? In this sense, are you planning to um, make the, the code open source, public? The code uh, will be open source uh, and we, it will be correlated with uh, extensive documentation online, uh, examples. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Uh, and also, uh, of course, uh, whoever, whoever wants to participate in the implementation is uh, warmly welcome. I think we have yeah. some questions. Yes, we have questions from the chat. Uh, first of all, thank you for your very nice talk. Uh, the question is, uh, if you know the performance of your package for sources without short wavelength measurements, uh, he meant uh, uh, if uh, we do not have uh, optical photometry, how accurate is your results in terms of redshift, dust, gas, and formation rate, and how large is the uncertainty? 
we haven't tested the performance of the uh, well actually the constraining power without including uh, the um, uh, optical uh, part uh, of the spectrum of course in terms of performance uh, this uh, would uh, get some boost in uh, uh, as we wouldn't need to have a uh, fine uh, sampling of the shorter wavelengths, but that uh, nevertheless uh, have to be computed anyways, because we need uh, to know what is the emission uh, absorbed and then re-emitted in the, in the infrared to have modeling of the dust emission. Um, I think I lost a part of the question. Yeah, how large is the uncertainty if you don't have a part a portion, but of course you have answered, I think. Okay. Uh, next one is uh, why use the Fisher matrix to display your results rather than the full posterior provided by the MCMC? Uh, if uh, he understands correctly your model, you could miss a secondary peak in your parameter space in case of a degenerate solution. Uh, yes, this is true. Of course, uh, a full uh, posterior measurement uh, would be the perfect uh, test bench. We are still uh, tuning a bit uh, that part of the library. Uh, and um, furthermore, having the result uh, from uh, the Fisher matrix itself, uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, it comes with some assumptions uh, uh, that, of course, are. Uh, um, uh, that you have Gaussian error, so you, you don't have uh, secondary peaks, that's true. Uh, and this will be covered uh, in, uh, in the final publication uh, that will come out uh, with the library. Uh, next question is, uh, is it enough to have a flux measurement at two ALMA bands? Is a measurement at high ALMA frequency preferable? No, oh, no, it's totally fine uh, to just have uh, the um, band seven and band six. Uh, actually, I've included these mostly because uh, some of the um, uh, we are mimicking with this uh, photometric mock photometric system. Let's see uh, the photometric system used uh, to um, uh, study these sources because actually applying the library uh, to perform again the analysis on these sources that are uh, very well known and well studied would provide us the final test bench of uh, physical correctness of the uh, of the library so i have a question to extend this one uh, what if you add also radio band points or uh, extend to x-ray yes uh, this uh, uh, this will be done, uh, and uh, this will uh, break a bit the degeneracy that might uh, um, that might come uh, between uh, parameters uh, that are uh, 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 that between parameters uh, defining uh, the stellar emissions and parameter uh, defining the um, uh, the dust absorption and emission. Mostly because uh, on the X-ray band, uh, we have contributions uh, from X-ray binaries uh, and the eventual AGN. Uh, so this does not depend on dust, as well as for uh, uh, the radio bands, in which the emission is also uh, mostly depending on um, uh, stellar processes. Uh, and so is not related uh, with um, uh, with the, the dust contributor. Uh, I wanted to say just, ah, yes. Uh, and furthermore, having more points uh, uh, on the um, uh, spectrum uh, also allows you to, uh, to do inference on uh, a larger set of parameters, because of course, these I'm showing here are not all the three parameters you can uh, have uh, in, uh, in the library. Uh, some of them has been uh, fixed because, of course, you cannot use uh, 10 points to fit 10 parameters. <laughs> Just... Thanks. No other questions. Thank you very much, uh, Tommaso, again, also for uh, your precise answers.